Good afternoon, my dear St. Paul siblings. I am Reverend Cassie Nunez, and I will be bringing today's homily. Now, before we begin, let us pray. Creator, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the privilege and blessing to be able to stop in the middle of our day and come together to lend an ear, to listen to what your word has to say. May your message today move us to action as we continue on our day. May it bring hope if we are feeling hopeless. And may you bring reassurance if we are in doubt. Thank you for the community that you have surrounded us with. For they support us even in the most difficult times. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, before I jump into our homily, I'd like to read to you today's gospel story. And it's found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 33, and then jumping to verse 44 through 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a, tr a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and brought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was, gro th that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they threw it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he, went, and he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, uh, along with this um, uh reading or, or, or scripture, we also get um, the uh, Old Testament reading, which is uh, the story of Jacob. Um, Jacob goes to Laban's um, home or, or territory and um, begins to work for him. Um, Laban, seeing that Jacob is working so well, asks him, well, what would you like I, I know we're family, but let me pay you. And Jacob responds, well, you have a daughter who I have fallen in love with and would love to marry. So Laban says, well, if you work for me seven years, you can marry her. Now, Jacob was talking about Rachel. And when the seven years um, were up, they had a big party to marry Jacob and um he spends the night with the daughter. When he wakes up, he notices it's not uh, Rachel who is in his bed, but Leah. And um, that gets him pretty upset and tells, him, tells Laban, you tricked me. You said um, I could marry your daughter, Rachel, and you've given me Leah. And Laban says, yeah, well, we don't quite believe in marrying your um, younger daughter before your older daughter. But if you were for me another seven years, then you can have Rachel. And Jacob does. He loved Rachel so much that he works another seven years. 
and um, eventually ends up marrying her as well. And um, these parables and the story of Jacob have this underlying theme of work, which reminds me of our undocumented immigrant community. Being part of the un immigrant, uh, undocumented immigrant community has its frustrations and joys. Leaving everything and everyone behind, taking on a tiresome and dangerous journey, holding tight to a change of clothes, some important documents, and the scent of home is one of the most difficult and painful things we do to be able to provide for our families. Our most profound desire is to stay with loved ones in our homes where our humanity is never questioned, in our countries where community comes together spontaneously to celebrate life. However, other realities push us to sacrifice all to be able to see our families back home. Meet, um, our families back home meet their basic human necessities. For employment is limited in our countries and hunger roams the streets. Embarking on this painful journey, the pain and fear we encounter seems to stick to us even years and years after being in the States. For we never really feel relief or safe. Upon our arrival, we immediately began to look for employment, which is, in most cases, does not take us long, for the oppressor is always ready to receive its next victim and offers long hours with minimum pay. But it does not matter, for at the end of the day, what little we get is enough to provide back home. Now, traveling back and forth from one country to the other is not feasible, for the danger of losing one's life is always a possibility. Today's scriptures in Genesis reminded me of the community that works tirelessly with the promise to one day receive more than a couple of dollars that alleviate hunger back home. For many, not only work the fields years and years with minimum pay, but also do everything in their power to remain unseen by legal authorities, keeping all the local rules and laws. When politicians began to promise a way to bring uh, an alternative to our undocumented siblings, we are filled with the same hope and determination Jacob was filled when he was promised Rachel. However, unlike Jacob's story, several more years go by, and the reward is a mere mention of what could have been. Now, if the story of Jacob makes you think about the unfairness of Laban for tricking him to get another to work yet another um, seven years, then I hope you get equally disturbed by the idea of empty promises to our undocumented siblings for the support that seems to show up when something excruciating is reported on the news, such as children being put in caged like fences um, in camps. May it continue to be present when the news no longer reports it, but it continues to exist. For when we do speak and stand up for justice, we are working for the kingdom. Now, in our parables, we have the parable of the mustard seed, in which we know that, um, or, or we are told that the mustard seed is this tiny little one, and it, it even calls it, it is the smallest of all the seeds. Yet, when it's planted, and the soil is worked, and is cared for, a, a shrub grows, and eventually a tree so big and so welcoming that trees want to come and perch their nests upon it. The parable of the yeast tells us of a woman who has mixed three um, measures of flour with, with yeast. And um, if you've worked with yeast before and you let it rest, you know that it will expand and it will spread double or triple its size. On the parables of the treasure and the pearl, we see two individuals willing to sell all 
to give all in order to keep this one thing they found one um the the place where the treasure is buried and the other one the precious pearl and lastly we are given the story of the fishermen who who go catch fish and they get so many and towards the end those fishes are um sorted now these parables all speak of work as well as jacob's story as i mentioned before the work that we do when we speak out against injustice the work that we do when we are helping our neighbor the work that we do to expand the kingdom it's all there in these parables for sometimes it feels like um, the way we are living our lives and um, our wit is witness to those around us of what a Christian is other times it is the way we march out in the streets. It is the way that we support those um, organizations and movements that bring liberty to those who are most marginalized and captive. In the mustard seed parable, we are urged to have trust, not on our own work and actions, but that sooner or later they will bear fruits. And um, the parable of the yeast represents the expansion of the gospel out into the world. The work that we do when we do speak up lets others witness in the gospel in action. And again, this is kingdom work. Now, don't let the last parable, the one where the fishermen go out and cast a net and bring back fish, because we, we do get an explanation of that. And um, it could urge some type of eschatolo eschatological uh, thinking in, in an escape of um, what we are not to do. And it seems like we are asked to just continue on living life and that God, uh, or rather the angels, will take care of sorting good from, from bad. So it kind of makes us want to say, well... If there will be a point where the good and the bad will be sorted, then why don't we just pray so hard for that time to get here already because things are really bad. I think that is an easy way out. That is an easy way to say, um, I wasn't called for this because there, that is God's um, work. However, if we look at the way the men both both persons, the one with the treasure and the pearl work and sold all they had in order to keep these treasures. That is what we are being called to do. Not in a literal way for you to go and sell your house and your belongings, but rather to give it your all when we are working for the kingdom so that we are all free. So that if you do sit on privilege, you are not there alone that you know you have a, a surplus of something, whether it is um, economic or, or whether it is in, in other ways, um, education, academics, whether it is knowledge, whatever it is that you have of that surplus, it is not meant for you to be having it on your own. Instead, we are asked to go out and give that to folks who are in great need. We are called to bring the good news in action, not only by word. And that is might be might feel like hard work because that kind of work never ends. Uh, let's be reminded that in uh, when God's will it's done on earth as it is in heaven, we see God's kingdom. When justice and peace roam these streets, from other countries' streets, instead of hunger and pain, instead of illness, then we will see God's will be done on earth as in heaven. So may these parables and the um, story of Jacob remind you of that community that works tirelessly 
but may it also urge you to work tirelessly for the kingdom. May we be reminded that the privilege we hold is not because God has blessed us with with this privilege and, and it's our right, but rather that there are systems placed that keep things so um, unequal, or rather there's no e um, equity that folks go without while others have surplus. May these words stir in you a desire to continue working and fighting for justice and equity. Because I know God does want to see all God's children thrive and be happy and find a place of rest. And you too will get one. May these words guide the rest of your day. May them be present with you when you see injustice. May they drive you to speak out. May God bless you and keep you. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, we pray. Amen.